Republican field, there are some who are good fighters. They haven't won those battles. There are others who've won elections but haven't consistently taken on the big fights. You showed you can do both. Now I'm running for president to fight and win for the American people. And Scott Walker makes 15. Today he entered the crowded 2016 Republican field, but does he have what it takes to stand out? Joining us now for more on Scott Walker, Kirsten Kukowski, Communications Director for the Scott Walker Campaign. Welcome to Newsmax Prime. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. All right, so a uh, little bit of a busy day for you. Uh, he does make 15. Was there any trepidation uh, about when he was going to announce because there are so many who are already in? No, not at all. Lucky number 15. Um, you know, I, the, the governor, he, he had to get his budget done, and he signed it yesterday at 4 o'clock. And, you know, he, he, that, that's his brand. He's a principled guy. When he says he's going to do something, he's, he's going to do it. And that's why we believe that he's going to take off here after this announcement today. All right, so we've got a governor from a generally blue state, went up against the labor unions, won, showed that he's a guy for the people. He's got an impressive record in Wisconsin. What has he done there specifically that you think can translate to the national scene? Well, I think it's a lot. It's, it's taking on the unions, like you said, but it's what taking on the unions provided for the state. Right. It means that it, it brought power from the state back to local control so that they're able to make their own decisions, whether it be, um, you know, anything from their safety and security in their community uh, with law enforcement to, uh, you know, teachers pay so that we're paying based on merit and, and, and not because of collective bargaining rights. And so, you know, that is his philosophy on government. It is let's bring that power back from Washington or from the states and let's give it back to the, to the local government. So I think that's a big thing. Um, the other is just his fiscal uh, responsibility and, you know, the, the putting money back in the pockets of Wisconsinites. Um, he eliminated an entire tax bracket. Uh, property taxes are down. Um, and I think that that's a very um, positive thing that once people find out who this guy is and what he stands for, they're going to really uh, appreciate that about him. Uh, Kirsten, uh, I've, I've got to ask you, when... Scott Walker, as the governor, went after these labor unions when he took a stand, when Madison was flooded with people with picket signs and even had school children hold, holding up big messages against the governor. He won when most people didn't think he had any shot. Will he be able to take that to Washington and say, listen, these special interest groups can come after me, these lobbyists can come after me, but look what I just did. Well, I believe the best indicator of that is that he's done it before, right? And we, there's, there's probably no better indicator. And he is, I will say, he is the most unflappable person I have ever met. Yeah. Um, Bloomberg's Mark Halpern actually found him outside of it. He just did, you know, hours before he's announcing to run for president of the United States. And he tweeted and said, man, this guy, he's just, he's unflappable. He's calm. He's collected. Um, and I think that that's exactly he has the personality, the drive, and the, the philosophy, uh, and, and the results that he's already had in Wisconsin that, that he can actually rely on right now. Hey, earlier today, Hillary Clinton, the presumptive nominee from the other side, called Scott Walker out by name. Take a listen. I'd love to get your reaction after this. Republican governors like Scott Walker have made their names stomping on workers' rights. And practically all the Republican candidates hope to do the same as president. I will fight back against these mean-spirited, misguided attacks. First of all, pretty good thing that she's already calling him out. That probably feels good for your camp. But what are your thoughts specifically on what she said? Well, I think she's wrong. I think that she needs to study up a little bit on what the governor has done here and what the results have meant for this, this state because he has turned this state around because of the hard decisions that he has made. Um, so I think she needs to study up a little bit. Um, but, you know, just in principle in, in, in Washington and these Democrats fighting, you know, going after uh, the governor, whether it be, the, you know, Obama uh, whether it be Hillary, uh, whether it be uh, the AFL-CIO re who released a statement today that was essentially um, that he's a, he's, a, he's a national disaster. I don't think that was verbatim, but you get the yeah. picture. You know, I think that that just goes to show you that they're scared of this of him. They're scared of the governor. They 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 know that he has results. They know that he, um, you know, that voters really um, he appeals to voters, and I think that that's why they're going out there early and often. Um, to, to just try and mislead people. The poll numbers continue to come in. Let's, let's talk about this new Reuters poll that's out right now. Let's take a look at it. The poll has Bush and Trump in a dead heat. Chris Christie, interestingly enough, is third. Scott Walker comes in at sixth. What is your campaign going to do to kick him back up to the first, second, third spot? I mean, is this a good position to be in, knowing that he just announced today? I, well, I think that it's a... 
I think that's an indicator. I think that, you know, we are one of the last ones to get into this race. Um, after coming out very hot in Iowa for that first speech that everyone remembers back, I believe, either end of January, early February. And, you know, he had to get, he had to get his, his work done in Wisconsin. Um, so we're a little late to the game, but I think that that just means we have plenty of room to, to, to go up from here. Um, but also there's been a lot of other polls, state polls, whether it be Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, Nevada, right. that show us very much in the race, if not leading. All right, Kirsten, thank you so much. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting one. We appreciate your time. You know, we want to hear from you, and now it's easier than ever. You can send your comments via email, Facebook, Twitter, and you can also include your comments at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Want to hear from you now. It's easier than ever. Stay right here.